given six people, we're going to do two slots, we're going to do one now before tea and then one after, where you get three minutes. It's the hardest speaking slot we've got here today because you have to condense your talk into a very short uh, piece of time. And how we're going to work it is, um, we're, going to, we're going to get them up one at a time, and through audience participation and your response to their talk, as they finish and walk off, we're going to gauge that. Then there's a panel of, of, of some of the speakers today who are going to evaluate it as well. Then we're going to uh, mix in a bit of Twitter feedback, and then we're going to choose a winner. So we're going to announce a winner later today, and the winner gets a, a full 20-minute slot to speak at Net Profit next year, which is pretty cool. So our first um, three speakers are Eric Edelstein, Rory Berry, and Elodie Kleinhans. They're going to come up. You're going to see a clock on either of the screens. And it's going to count them down from the minute they start. Uh, it's a tough gig, but please engage them. And, and when they start getting close to the end, help them wrap up with, with counting down. Great. Here's Eric. Can everyone hear me? Fantastic. Silicon Valley, okay, there's a really small place, but I don't actually know too many of you. Raise your hand if you do know me, just so I can see. And just for those people that don't know me, I've done a couple of tech startups over the last decade in South Africa, and I was quite proud of those until a couple of weeks ago where I became father. It was a very good moment. So two years ago in early 2010, we had this idea to create a new type of platform, a crowdsourcing social network and brands and organizations would launch a project on Evly, similar to Facebook fan pages, and the whole idea was to really get people to crowdsource. And we spent a year and a hell of a lot of money, and what happened then is we went to our customers, and they said if this was on a Facebook fan page, it would be amazing. And we said, you need to come on to Evly to do it. And they said, it's cutting edge, but we want it on somewhere else. And in early 2011, I went to Silicon Valley. I thought I'd spend a few days there. I ended up spending four months living there. I spoke to 45 venture capitalists and 100 angel investors, and all of them said to me, if this was on Facebook, this would be the most amazing business. So we had a big dilemma, because South Africans don't like failure, and we'd spent a lot of money, and what I learned in Silicon Valley is, it's okay to fail. So we decided to do something called a pivot, and it's changing your entire business in a way that doesn't change the vision, but changes what you do. What we did is we chose the Silicon Valley route. We pivoted. We threw out all our software. We had spent millions of rand building it, and we kicked it all out. So let me just repeat that. It's really hectic. We threw out everything we had done, and we started again. And we pre-built everything so we could be on Facebook, a Facebook-type app, where in a couple of minutes, you can launch software on Facebook on your website, crowdsourcing on Facebook. 12 weeks later, we got our first paid customer. And now six months later, we're working with some of South Africa's biggest brands. Capitech, we've generated 700 ideas for them in four weeks on Facebook. Just Play, we did market research. Coca -Cola, men's Health and Coca-Cola, you can see 1,000 people are seeing how they can lose weight. It's all about engaging the crowd and crowdsourcing. Some of our customers, you can see the response. And the takeaway from this is that South Africans have a mentality that it's not OK to fail. It really is. But when you start failing, fail very fast and learn from it. And then take the rest of the money you've raised and start again with the same vision you've got, but make it better the next time round. Thank you very much. Hello again. I'm the guy from the 227 video and the guy from Firm Job Speech. So thanks for the intro, guys. Alrighty, the importance of having child's eyes. When thinking about this three minutes, I, was, I, I just had one real thing to, to bring to you guys. Point at thing, push button, nothing works. <laughs> ah! The average child laughs 400 times a day. The average adult, 17. Why is that? It's not like they don't fail. It's not like they don't get hurt. It's not like things don't suck for them. It's because <laughs> they look at the world differently. They see awe, they see wonder, they see excitement, they see adventure, they see a stick that is not just a stick, it's a tree, it's a club, it's a weapon, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. And eventually, if you're at summer camp in the States, it gets spray painted and taken home as a gift to mom because they forgot to do something else. But 
how does this apply to business? How do child's eyes apply to business? Well, when we think about starting up, when you think about being an entrepreneur, an imagineer, you get these magic words. You get told to bootstrap. It's about passion. You get told to network, graft, find funding. The magical IPO. But what about fun? Why don't we get told to have fun when we're doing this? If it's a passion, it's supposed to be fun. So here is my challenge to you guys. When you're out there and you're having a bit of a mare, turn it into a fun adventure. No matter how bad it gets, I promise you the sun will rise tomorrow unless something spectacular has happened and then we don't have to worry about it anyway. <laughs> so when you're out there and something crazy is going on and something just bedawned has happened, stop. Eh. I've lost my photos. There was a photo there which said stop. There was a photo there which was a rose, so smell the roses. There was a photo there, I promise they were all mine, I took them, that said, look at the clouds, because it means you've stopped being at the coalface, you've taken a step back, and you've realized everything's actually okay. Go on adventures in your head at the very least to amazing places, but most importantly, have fun. Thank you very much. This is Julie. Julie has a great service, product, or idea. And just like you, Julie loves coming to events like this, where she can tell everybody all about it. The problem is that Julie's great service, product, or idea seems pretty complicated to most people. For some reason, people just don't seem to get it when Julie explains that it's about consolidating network solutions for high-level enterprise by pushing the envelope of traditional value propositions thereby bringing synergy to the service level, both above and below the line. People just don't get it. Um, uh, potential investors don't get it, the public doesn't get it, and not even her family gets it. The solution? Storytelling. Since the dawn of time, we've told stories to teach lessons and help people make decisions. A simple, concise story is all Julie needs to quickly share her idea. So here's how it works. Instead of diving straight into features, technical specs, and corporate mumbo jumbo, Julie rather establishes a scenario. She creates a character. Let's call him Graham. She tells us what Graham does and what makes him happy. Then she goes on to describe the problem that Graham is facing, the pain that he is experiencing, and why this is making his life a living nightmare. Of course, she then uses the opportunity to present her solution her own service product or idea, of course. She shows how Graham's problem is solved using her service and how it's going to change his life forever. She ends on an enticing call to action. She shows how anyone can get in on the benefit that Graham received and where to go to find out more. Before long, people are getting it. Investors are literally throwing money at her. The public is ready to buy, and her family finally knows what she does. So. Try it. Um, set yourself this challenge. Today, during the tea break, at the after party, um, in life. Try telling a story to make people see why their lives will be better by giving their money to you. I'm Elodie. And I'm Adrian. We're from an explainer video company called Blink Tower. We live for storytelling and tell stories for a living. Thanks Thank for you. your time.